Welcome to Couple Crush. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to make this beautiful, trendy, boning, floating sleeve. If you find this video helpful and uh, you've learned anything about the video, don't forget to like this video and share it to as many people as possible. Please kindly subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so that anytime I upload a video, you will get it. So please stay tuned as you make these sleeves together. So to make this sleeve, these are the primary materials that you need. You need your collar stay or your gum stay, whichever the case. If your material is sturdy, that means you also need, you, you may not need the A stay. Then if it is not sturdy, it is soft in nature, you will need your A stay to make the material firm. So you also need your boning, you need a, a bias step, but if you are using a ridge line uh, um, boning, you may not need this bias because that one you will stitch on your lining or if you want to stitch it on the main fabric there is no problem but to make your work neat and professional you may need to stitch it on the lining then what you are going to do is that the first thing is to draft out the sleeve how you want the sleeve to be so the measurement that you need for this is your round shoulder measurements plus two inches allowance um, ease allowance and one inch seam allowance so my round uh, shoulder is 40 inches plus, sorry, 40 inches divided by 2, which is 20 inches. Remember that the sleeve will start from the center, to the central part of your chest to the central part of your back. That is half of your round shoulder. Then you add 2 inches allowance, is allowance for the clothes to be able to flare out, not to be stuck on your shoulder. So my own is... 40 inches divided by 2 is 20 inches plus 2 inches allowance which is 22 inches and I'm going to cut my fabric by 23 inches that is 1 inch for sewing allowance so here I have 23 inches and the length I mean the, the wideness of the your sleeve is depending on your choice whatsoever you want however you want the sleeve to be how wide you want it to be so you may decide to make it like eight inches or nine inches mine i have taken eight and a half inches plus by one inch seam allowance and this is what i have nine and a half inches so the next thing for you to do is to fold your sleeve into two if you are comfortable with the shape if you want it to be like this on the shoulder that means you have to pleat it you have to pleat it this way when you are fixing it on the shoulder and to still give you this beautiful shape but if you don't want to pleat it you need to trim it off as I'm going to do so so watch what I'm going to do I have folded this fabric into two and I am going to fold it again into two just for trimming so after folding it the next thing is to measure one inch from the folded edge if you want this side to be wider you can easily make it two inches but i'm going to take one inch plus half inch seam allowance making it uh, one and a half inches so that after sewing it i'll end up having two inches width and i'll still have to fold it into it then all you need to do is to connect it from this uh, one and a half inches down to the end this way then after that you need to trim it out So after trimming it, this is what we have here. And the shape is already looking very nice and beautiful. So remember that this side I will still have to pleat it very slightly after turning it over. The next thing to do is to iron your stay on it and make sure to cut two of these, one for the lining and one for the main fabric. So this is the main fabric. I'm going to place it on the material and cut two of these. After cutting it, I'll add my stay and then I'll add my uh, gum stay or if you have a collar stay, you can use it to make it more strong. I'll add my collar stay. After adding everything and trimming it off, I'm going to show you how it looks like. So after ironing the A stay and the gum stay on the sleeve, look at what is coming out. It's really coming out nicely. And this is the main fabric while this is the lining fabric. The reason why I, I always iron A stay first is because it will help the fabric, even if the gum stay pulls it down, it will not rumble at the end of the day as it 
usually would be if you were to attach it directly as in this uh, lining fabric. So after that, the next thing is to use my bias tape to create a channel here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to place my bias tape this way and create the channel, boning channel. And make sure that the channel that you are creating is uh, big enough, is wide enough for you to insert the boning this way. So if it is not wide enough, it will post a challenge when you are inserting the boning. So after doing this, I'm going to show you the next step. After running the bias tape, creating the channel, I'm going to show you the next step. Please remember you need to create this channel on the lining fabric, not on the main fabric. One thing that will make your work look neat and professional is when you do not have so much seam running through your clothes. If possible, you can easily sew it and no seam. Some people do create the boning channel without using a bias tape on the uh, lining fabric. All they do is to keep the, the sleeve this way. After stitching on it, turning the sleeve inside out, the next thing they will do is to create the boning channel by top stitching on the fabric. But this may not give that clothes a professional look. That's why I choose to use this method, creating the boning channel on the lining fabric. So let's do so and see how it looks like. So after turning the boning uh, channel, this is what I have here. You can see how beautiful it looks. And on testing it out, when you are inserting it, so when you want to, you know, if what you are doing is okay, you need to test it out. You can see how it's passing easily without any stress. So you are not going to pass it right away. You need to do something more important first before you pass it. So all you need to do is to place the lining fabric on the main fabric, right side facing each other. And you look at how I place the boning channel. It is not um, directly on the edge of it. I left about half inch for sewing allowance. So when I'm uh, going to turn it over with this uh, main fabric, I will not have to stitch on the boning channel. So that is the same thing you should do. So after this, I'm going to place it this way and stitch around. I may likely close up this uh, upper part here so that I can only leave one opening at this part. But uh, if I don't choose to, I may leave it that way. But I need to close it so that when I'm inserting the boning, it will have way to stop. So, and when you are inserting your boning, please make sure you have uh, any kind of light, candle light, whatsoever you have. If you want to insert your boning, you at this stage, it is really sharp. So all you need to do is to make sure that you trim these edges so that it does not become too sharp when you are inserting your boning on anywhere. Look at how I cut these two angles. And after that, I use my light to melt at least smaller part of it so that it will become smooth. In this way, you will notice that even if it comes in contact with anything, it doesn't, uh, it doesn't wound the person or make the fabric to be cut. So you have to do that in all the parts that you have. This is really very nice, especially on this plastic boning. By soap boning, you'll be able to make this part, this edge, to be smooth. Some people use candle on it. Some people use a silo tape to wrap. On it anyway you want to use it to make sure that you avoid some risk you have to do that so let's just uh, turn it round and see what we have so after stitching it round this is what I have here remember I've closed up this side so all I'm going to do is to trim up some excess and then turn it inside out So I'm going to turn it inside out. Remember that I have left this opening, so I'll just push it in and turn it inside out. So after turning it over, I have uh, applied some heat on it. So this is what we have. This is the back part. You can see some uh, lines passing through it. It is a seam line. 
but this other side is just as plain as anything. It's very beautiful. So the next thing is to insert your bones. Now, if uh, this is your front part of it, remember that the, the outfit will be bent towards this side. So if the outfit is bending towards this side, while you are inserting your bones, do not insert it this way. Do not, you see this side that is bending, do not insert it this way. Instead, just turn it this way and put your bone in inside the channel that you created and insert it this other way. This is what I'm going to do for the two ends I have inserted. Remember that your boning should not be longer than the width, I mean the length of your fabric. Instead, it should be shorter by maybe half of an inch so that if you wish to stop stitch these other parts, you may not have a challenge, especially if you are using the plastic boning. So I have inserted it and it's really buried inside the fabric. So now we have this beautiful sleeve here. So when you are fixing it, after that, this is what it looked like, and it's really structured. So the next thing to do is to pin it up on your dress or clothes, whatever you are making. So after that, it looks so beautiful. I hope you have learned something in this tutorial. Look at this side as it is very flat and nice no rumbling, nothing is happening. It looks so professional. So just do that and remember to share this video, subscribe to this channel, turn on the notification bell and continue to watch this. See the sleeve that I'm making this, uh, the, I mean the full outfit that I'm making this sleeve for. Don't forget to check out the channel. I have the video on it. So please don't forget to subscribe and stay tuned for another time. Bye bye for now.